Good afternoon. You're joining us for an extended news bulletin this lunchtime. We'll be on air for just over three minutes here on Channel 4. And then we'll carry on until quarter past 12 online. Just log on to our website, channel4.com forward slash news. Now, doctors say that obesity in Britain is in a huge crisis and they want more to be done to tackle the problem. A report by the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges, which represents most of Britain's doctors, has called for higher taxes on sugary drinks and a ban on television advertising for high-calorie food before 9 o'clock. The report also wants a clampdown on fast food restaurants near schools and leisure centres. The Food and Drink Federation say the proposals are unbalanced. Around a quarter of adults in the UK are obese or classed as such. The Prime Minister says Britain and India could forge one of the great partnerships of the 21st century. David Cameron has arrived in Mumbai at the beginning of a three-day trade visit. He's leading a delegation of business chiefs, including representatives from Rolls-Royce, BP and BAE Systems. Mr Cameron has also indicated that UK visa rules could be relaxed to help Indian business travellers. This is going to be the third largest economy in the world by 2030 and I want to make sure it's British firms that are helping to build those hospitals, construct those roads, provide those universities and we want a real exchange between our countries. The Environment Secretary is due to meet food retailers this afternoon to discuss restoring consumer confidence in the wake of the horse meat scandal. Owen Patterson will meet with representatives from Tesco, Asda, Sainsbury's and Morrison's at Westminster later. The retailers are set to update Mr Patterson on recent testing results and how they plan to boost sales following the scandal. The Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez has made a surprise homecoming after a cancer treatment in Cuba. The controversial leader announced the news on Twitter, thanking his people for their support during his illness and confirming that he would continue his treatment in Venezuela. Thousands of Shiites in Pakistan have held a demonstration demanding greater protection from the government following a bombing over the weekend that killed 85 people. Around 4,000 people sat with the bodies of 71 victims of the bombing, saying they would not allow them to be buried until their demands were met. A hardline Sunni group, Lashka El Khlafani, says it carried out the attack. A strike by BBC journalists today has forced some of the corporation's flagship news programmes off the news. Uh, BBC Radio 4's Today programme was dropped from this morning's schedule and BBC Breakfast Television ran a reduced service. The strike is part of a dispute over the redeployment of 30 staff who are facing compulsory redundancy. More news from me in a moment, but live there on our website. But first, the weather. The weather does lots of different things, and so does the post office. This afternoon, mainly dry and fine across the UK, with plenty of sunshine, thicker cloud at times in the east, particularly towards Lincolnshire and East Anglia. Highs of around 9 Celsius. Turning very cold tonight with long, clear spells and a widespread sharp frost. Southern and eastern areas will see a few mist and fog patches by dawn, lows down to 5 Celsius. Tomorrow, uh, after mist and fog clears, it'll be another mostly dry day. That's it. And as Channel 4 News at noon continues online, back to the Prime Minister's trade visit to India. Our political correspondent, Gary Gibbon, is travelling with David Cameron. David Cameron came to India within 10 weeks of becoming Prime Minister. He made it a priority to try and get a share of India's phenomenal growth. And Britain did get a bit more of a share. But in the last year, trade has slipped and the numbers of students coming from India to British universities has slumped. That was a target David Cameron wanted to set. He wanted the creme de la creme of India to come to Britain and then, when they graduated, come back to India and forge deep economic ties with the country that had educated them. That's not happening. Both the tenor of the immigration debate in Britain and rules around visas have kept them away. They're jumping off to America and other places instead. He's here to try to address that, tell them they're really welcome in Britain and come back picking up the trade numbers where they were originally going and not where they're currently sliding away to. More from Gary from India uh, tonight on Channel 4 News at 7. Now, police have launched a murder inquiry after a 19-year-old man was found dead with multiple injuries. Officers were called to a property in Salford just before 20 past 9 last night after reports of concern for the man's welfare. He was pronounced dead at the scene. A post-mortem will be held later to establish how he died. Extra police are patrolling the area to reassure residents.
Tributes have been paid to the chart-topping country music singer Mindy McCready, who died at the age of 37 after taking her own life. The troubled singer, whose career had been dogged by personal problems, was found on the front porch of her home in Arkansas. Her long-term boyfriend had recently died, and she'd lost custody of her two children because of drug and alcohol abuse. Now, it's a stark warning to mothers-to-be. Drinking during pregnancy could cause permanent brain damage and have a lifelong impact on their child. Tomorrow, leading experts will publish the first clear guidance into fetal alcohol spectrum disorders, which affects thousands of children every year and is often misdiagnosed. Katie Razzle has been meeting some youngsters born with the condition to find out how it's affected their lives. All the time in cancer, Eddie, you need to half halt to make sure he doesn't get too fast. Learning how to control this horse helps Eddie keep his own behaviour in check. So when you're with your friends and you're getting excited and getting a bit silly, what do we do with you? Half halt. Half halt, yes. Eddie's disabilities were entirely avoidable, but his brain damage is for life. He lives at a centre in the New Forest that uses horses to teach youngsters with learning disabilities how to live more independently. I find learning stuff through the horse is a bit better than sitting down in a school. For instance, I had problems with shaving when I needed to start, and clipping the horses really helped me learn how to shave. This 18-year-old and his older brother Andy are diagnosed with Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorders, or FASD. It's a condition that's often misdiagnosed and is probably far more widespread than we realise. The term covers a range of disabilities caused by their mum drinking alcohol when they were in the womb. FASD is a disorder when you're in your mum's belly and she drinks while she's pregnant and then the alcohol gets in and you take it and it affects your upbringing and how you tend to, like how you're supposed to do stuff and how you can't do as much as you're supposed to. These young men are paying a heavy price for their mother's drinking, and conservative estimates here in Britain suggest 8,000 babies are born every year with FASD. Tomorrow, the first clear guidance will be published into the condition, and Channel 4 News has been given early sight of the report. It wants all mums to be warned that drinking alcohol in pregnancy has the potential to cause permanent brain damage and other birth defects. It also wants a new approach to identify children exposed to alcohol in the womb so they can be diagnosed earlier and given the support they need. Recognise him. So That's Andy. This, this is Andy. Andy's one of the first people we saw in clinic. Dr Mukherjee diagnosed Eddie's brother Andy with FASD when he was 14. He's the lead author on the report and runs the country's only specialist clinic for the condition. What you've got here is a classic picture of a child with fetal alcohol syndrome. Some people know that fetal alcohol syndrome can affect a child's face. You can see that the upper lip is quite thin. But in fact, far more often, it's the brain that's damaged irreparably. Drinking at any point can affect the brain. The more you drink, and the more you drink throughout, the more likely you are to have more severe effects. 70 medical professionals, including Dr Mukherjee, have written the report with the FASD Trust. It sets out a way for all children at risk to be identified in the womb. For this doctor, the guidance around alcohol and pregnancy is confused. When you say to somebody, avoid alcohol, but if you drink one to two, it's OK, you know, that's a mixed message and some people just don't know what to believe. And I don't want to come and try and scare people, because that's not the point, but it's trying to give people the evidence to say, it's nine months. Um, if you drink at low level or have an occasional drink, you're unlikely to cause harm, but I can't sit here and say that I can guarantee that. I can if you don't drink at all. One of the problems is we're all drinking more and the gap between units and measures is getting wider. A small 125 milliliter glass of wine used to be equivalent to one unit of alcohol. These days, this is actually 1.5 units because wine's got stronger. And even that's confusing, as a standard glass of wine now isn't 125 millilitres, but 175 millilitres. Two glasses of this a week would take you well over the maximum number of units recommended by the government as safe in pregnancy. We spoke to a group of mothers to ask what information they were given about alcohol when they were pregnant. I don't think anyone told me about drinking, actually. I think I knew that you shouldn't drink, but I don't think a midwife told me anything about it. I think the problem is you just don't know what does moderation mean. 
Does that mean half a glass? Does it mean one glass? Does it mean yeah. once a week? Does it mean once a month? What, does it mean every night? I, you know. I wouldn't say half a glass with dinner once or twice a week would make a huge difference, but to be honest with you, I don't know, and I don't think any doctor actually addressed that with me. That's how loud. Stanley is eight years old and was diagnosed with FASD last year. No, that sounds totally messed up. I used to go to guitar lessons, but um, the people can't teach me anymore because um, I don't know why. Expelled from his infant school after just two weeks, Stanley's now at a specialist school. His plight shows the cruelty of FASD. Da -ha. Despite his learning disabilities and even at his young age, Stanley understands how the condition limits his life. Don't grow that much. I'm not that strong. I can't control what I say or anything, I don't think. He finds it very difficult to keep friends um, because he says, says what's going on in his head. Yeah, he's lonely. Um, mm. Can you please get your uniform on? Stanley's mum, Samantha, was an alcoholic when she was pregnant with him. She's since given up drink. How do you feel about me drinking when I was pregnant, oh, Stanley? I'm a bit irritated up. I drank to, to black out, basically. I could drink, say, four or five pints um, and then go on to um, brandy um, and shots. Oh, Stanley's medication concert. So this Samantha is lives daily with the impact of what she did to Stanley. If he doesn't have medication, he's just... No, no, so he needs it for uh, just keeping him calm and focused so he can, he's actually teachable at school. And perhaps it's shame that prevents mothers of FASD children from talking, but she's the only birth mum we found who would agree to speak to us. She wants to prevent others from making the same mistake. I wouldn't have hurt you on purpose. I feel very guilty and, and it's, I've been very, very down on myself, you know, um, but again, it's accepting that I have my own illness and, and uh, you know, life happens and we've got to make best of what we've got. Stanley's diagnosis was possible because as his birth mum, Samantha could tell the FASD specialist about her drinking. Tomorrow's report demands midwives record a mother's alcohol intake on her prenatal notes and her newborns. That's especially important for children taken into care as babies. Have a good day. The anecdotal evidence from my colleagues in the field would say that between 60 and 70% of these babies are being removed because parents are either dependent on alcohol or drugs. Many of these children only develop problems when they're in school. So adopters really are wallowing in the dark. They've got a child with complex emotional and behavioural needs and we, we play hump the alcohol history and it's really very difficult. I lived in here for about nine years. The family who took in Andy and his brother Eddie had to fight to find out how much the boy's birth mum had drunk. Hello. Incredibly, Paul Jackson and his wife Sharon have fostered or adopted five children from the care system with FASD. But they knew so little about the condition when Andy came to them, they blamed his difficulties not on drink, but on his abusive background. I was sort of locked in cupboards and was never actually fed properly. It was just what everyone else didn't eat. So you were just given the scraps then, was yeah. it? Yes. Basically, I was just treat, being treated like a dog. But it's the damage done to him in the womb that means Sharon and Paul know Andy will never be able to take care of himself completely. You want Andy to be as independent as possible. He's the oldest, right? I go through stages where one minute I'm really hard on him. I think, no, you must be independent. You know, I'm not going to be around forever. I really, really want you to be able to cope in the outside world. Yeah. And I'll push him and push him and then something will happen and I'll like go back into wrapping him up in cotton wool going, why did I push him so hard? Right. He's not going to cope. Andy does have his own flat, but he can't even have a cooker as it would be too dangerous. His birth mother's drinking has affected his life in so many ways. I always just grew up when I was a kid, I, uh, I went to 17 and I'm driving. And then my mum and dad sort of not like let me let it down gently. She said, Andy, with your condition and like my reflexes and my concentration, there would be probably would be very little chance of you being able to drive. And it it really hurt me. In some ways, FASD gets worse as you get older. 
Andy has such a lot of support from his foster parents so that even though he's trying to live independently, what he can actually manage with his condition is quite limited. What's so frustrating is that the damage he suffered was entirely preventable. That whole set is the one that I wrote yesterday. Andy and Eddie will need help from their foster parents for life. A review of UK alcohol policy is currently underway. Campaigners want the government to tackle the issue of FASD head on and tell mums to be there is no safe limit for drinking. Only that way, they say, will it ensure the lives of more youngsters aren't blighted before they've even begun. Katie Russell. Now, the main headline this lunchtime, doctors say obesity in Britain is now a huge crisis and are calling for higher taxes on sugary drinks and restrictions on television advertising. More on that story tonight at 7. And don't forget, you can subscribe to Snowmail, our daily update of what's coming up in the programme. Just click the link here. See you.